And welcome to the Upstate Orange Podcast, where we're going to talk about a Syracuse basketball team that's lost three of its last four and is facing Georgetown next in Washington, D.C. to close out the regular season. And it's Thursday, March 7th, 2013. We're coming at you live from the Finger Lakes onecom studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. I'm Jim Sinecropi, and I'm joined in studio by a man that John Wallace says is the second best pure shooter he's ever <laughs> seen second to alan houston yeah i don't know about that but uh i appreciate it yeah, wallace said it <laughs> um tonight we're going to talk about the state of syracuse men's basketball uh like i said losers of three of their last four they beat DePaul on wednesday night now they're heading down to dc to face georgetown in their final regular season big east game ever and uh you know, could possibly be the last time they played Georgetown for a long, long time. So we'll preview that game. We have some great orange trivia. Uh, take a quick look at all the happenings in the Big East. Maybe even speculate as to uh, some of the seedings for next week's Big East tournament. The oh, and also I should mention real quick, we got uh, Lions High School head coach Zach Young in studio, uh, head coach of the Section Five Class C two champion Lions Lions, same high school that Jim Beheim went to back in the day. So uh, he's obviously a Syracuse fan, and, and we're going to bring him on the discussion tonight because Brad Connor's not with us. He's Brad's actually at a Cincinnati high school basketball game. They have a 9 o'clock tip on a Jeez. Thursday wow. night for, like, the Class A in Cincinnati. A lot of kids in school the next day. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. So uh, he wasn't able to make it tonight because his uh, son, Brandon, wanted to go check out that game. But uh, – He'll be back next time. The Upstate Orange Podcast is brought to you by Madey Miris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. If you've been injured and deserve compensation, call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. And also by Generations Bank, Generations of Service for over 140 years. Visit them online at mygenbank.com and check out their new mobile banking app. And Newark Pilots Baseball season ticket package is now available for the 2013 season at Colburn Park. Visit NewarkPilots.com for more information. Well, fellas, here we are. It's March, and we're about a week away from Syracuse's opening round game in the final Big East tournament ever as we know it. Um, Certainly Syracuse's last uh, time in the Garden for the annual postseason game but before that we got a, a treat we got georgetown in washington dc uh you know everybody got hyped up when they played in the dome Thirty-five thousand fans carmelo was there but that wasn't the last time they were going to play thankfully because syracuse lost we got a chance at redemption saturday but first first off you know for the past two three years syracuse has been pretty invincible uh you know just winning 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 now they lose three of four and there's a lot of holes in this team with postseason around the corner. I'm not as excited or confident as I was the past few years when we were projected to be a one seed or in the discussion for a one seed um, all those seasons. But you know what? We didn't go to a Final Four any of those years. We had some bad luck. Um, we didn't win a national championship any of those years. This year, everything is a mess. I think we're going to win it all, huh? <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Look at Louisville last year. They were, had a horrible February, losing like 6 of 7, and they go to the win the Big East Tournament, go to the Final Four. Two years ago, UConn came into the Big East Tournament on a four-game losing streak. They were on the bubble to even get in. They were like 19 and 12. or Actually, I'm just throwing numbers on my head. I don't know exactly what they were. But they were struggling in February. They go on and win the national championship. Zach is the head coach of Jim Beheim's former high school team. Oh, you didn't actually coach Beheim. Let's get that straight. <laughs> but, um, you know, what's your take? Well, you just got to get hot at the right time. Maybe they can, you know, the Georgetown game could be a starter for them and, or the Big East tournament. But sometimes Syracuse seems to do better in the NCAAs when they're kind of flying under the radar. You know, I think that's been some of Coach Beheim's best uh, – Best runs, you know, a little bit of a surprise, and they can make it, you know, a little deeper. I've thought all along this year if they got, even when they were running good, you know, just with a lack of inside game, I thought Sweet 16 would be a good year for them. 
but I'm hoping. Yeah, I mean, it's a, 96. We had John Wallace on last week for a great interview. And um, what seed know, were they that year? 96. Do you remember? Geez, yeah, I, remember. I, I thought know you would that, know that off the top of your I head. I should, but I, I want to say that I bet they were. I think they were. Uh, I think yeah. they were a five or a six at least that year. In 03, they or 03, they were a three seed, right? Yeah, and they were unranked preseason right. that year. Um, you know, and I, I, I think it's, you know, we kind of talked. The, the Syracuse started out so good. We, we were spoiled by the last couple of years where they, you know, only lost a handful of games. Uh, where they lose one Big East game last year, I think. Um, yeah, which is unbelievable. Yeah, it. it uh, but you got to remember, this is a team that lost four NBA draft picks. Um, you know, they lost a lot. They, they, and, you know. They they got a lot of nice pieces, but uh, you know they're just right now offensively they they can't score. Uh, their defense has been very consistent, you know, they're, they're, but they're, they're losing games where they're only scoring you know in the forties and fifties. And uh, if they get hot, you know they can beat anybody. But they gotta make shots. I, I, I just worry that at this point, you know, even you know last, Sutherland last night goes one for ten. Uh, you know, like. You know, two for his last thirty something. Trish, I got the stats on that. I might not know Syracuse's seed in ninety six, but Trish is two for twenty seven or one, one for twenty seven in the last four games. One for twenty seven from three point range in the last four games. That's uh, not good. <laughs> no. And uh, you know, so it's a team. You know, Trish is struggling. Obviously, Carter Williams has uh, been streaky, and uh, you know, he's not a consistent outside shooter. And, uh, you know, obviously they kind of – you always hope that Sutherland's going to be the guy to knock down the threes. And uh, he's been struggling a little bit with his shot, really. And, uh, you know, we kind of talk about it. Everybody thought when he came back and, he you know, the team kind of played well his first couple of games, but it's, it's really slid since. And, and Sutherland's a guy who, you know, you take away that Alabama game and Arkansas. Arkansas yeah. And, uh, you know, not really a great Season. shooting year. You yeah. know what I mean? He and He's a guy who typically has disappeared in, in Big East play. Uh, you know, he kind of feasts on some of the, the non-conference games. But, uh, you know, they're a team that's capable. And, you know, we talk about it. They, they don't have the one guy who you can throw the ball to in the post and he can score. They're kind of, you know, they got Fair, who's been great all year, but he's a slasher. He's not somebody that you can just rely on to get on the ball. And I think it's hard to win without that consistent score. You know, Coach Young talked about it, to uh, where you can just throw him the ball and he can get, you know, they can get you two points. Yeah, I mean, Rakeem Christmas is starting to remind me a little bit about Darryl Watkins, you know, of Darryl Watkins, who maybe it's because he misses so many dunks. Remember Darryl Watkins? The guy couldn't <laughs> couldn't seem to make a dunk. Uh, plug that right in behind you. See in the crack of that couch. There you go. Up a little higher. Up a little higher. Halfway up. There's the thing. See it? There you go. Um, yeah, what did he miss? Three dunks last night? Christmas? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The Wat Watkins used to miss wide open dunks, you know, and it's like, what the heck's going on with this guy? Um, and I'm starting to think Christmas is a little more going to end up with a legacy of Darrell Watkins, unless the legacy of you know maybe an Otis Hill or uh, Conrad McRae. Yeah, you see flashes every once in a while, but yeah. he just hasn't been what you know. Uh, he was around in McDonald yeah. All American, right? Yep. I mean, yep. I remember reading when he came out, they said that it was a weak crop of of centers for. To be the uh, to, you know it wasn't like the year before, but he shows flashes though, and he's 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 physically obviously built for the position. Um, but they also you know he's obviously you know they don't throw him the ball ever really in the post either. They don't know? really run anything for their <laughs> bigs either. I mean, yeah. there's times he's posted up and uh, you know they kind of look at him, then they swing it around and run a pick and roll, and you know Trish bricks a three. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah. you know they and I don't think Jim tells him to throw the ball in there because. He doesn't think those guys can score, and he he admits that. He says, you know, and obviously you're not going to post Keita up because he doesn't have any post. You know, he's not going to score in the post, and uh, they're kind of the guys who got to go after the ball and get through a rebound. And, you know, we have seen flashes of Christmas, you know, hitting some 10-footers and making a couple decent moves, but uh, nothing on a consistent basis. Yeah, really the only one when you mention consistency on this team is C.J. Fair, who's just unbelievable. He's got the best mid-range game in all of college basketball. He's a prolific uh, leaper, dunker, um, and you know in that uh, Louisville game again, all the games Syracuse lost. I think the fan base has been saying, "Why doesn't C.J. Fair get more looks?" You know, down the last ten minutes of a ball game, why don't they just pound it to him? Because he can, with the ball in his hands, he can get a shot off more often than not. It's going in. 
Yeah, you know, I think their offense is dominated by the guards. Uh, it's a lot of, you know, high screens where, you know, you get Trish and uh, Michael Carter-Williams uh, have the ball in their hands most of the time, and they look for them to make a play. And uh, so CJ's, using, you know, he's on the receiving end of a lot of nice plays by those guys, but he's not, you know, somebody who's initiating the offense or, you know, maybe a focus all the time. And, uh, you know, and the other big thing that bothers me about this team is, as of late, you know, in that Louisville game, just the turnovers by, you know, Trish, who was your, your senior four-year yeah, starter. Two key turnovers late for Trish there that were just uncharacteristic of what you expect from a senior guard. Um, and I'd say they were even uncharacteristic for Trish. He does make a lot of silly turnovers, but at the end of the game, I, I he hasn't done anything like that recently where he's he kind of gave that game away, any chance Syracuse had, you know, with those turnovers. So... Yeah, he, uh, you know, it. Uh, he. They're gonna go as far as he's gonna take them. Yeah, personally. I agree. I mean, when he was playing really well, they were winning. He hasn't played really well. They've been losing. I mean, it's it's not a, it's not a, a, it's not a complicated I, formula. I no. mean, when he's playing good, You're right. they're tough it's, to beat. You know, know, when he's being, you know, they're talking about him. You know, I know some people have him second round NBA or maybe even you know his stock sliding obviously a little bit now. You know, maybe he can get it going again. Yeah. But he's a guy who, you know, over the years they always talk about, you know, he he's got all the ability, you know, that you know it's in his head. But you know, it, it his career's gonna be over. So right. it, you know, at some point it's not in his head. He's just not that good. It's, Which you know, a lot of times this stuff takes a little storybook kind of a role. And Brandon Trish is a, everybody agrees he's a great kid, works hard. I'm kind of unassuming, um, well liked up at school, and. Uh, You'd like to see him get a payoff for all his hard work. He works hard. He works so hard, his back and he up giving him problems, you know. Um, so, I'd like to see maybe that he does get hot shooting and maybe they do make a run. And, you know, maybe everybody gets hot shooting. Yeah, I, I think it's a year, you know, there's nobody out there who, you know, you see all Syracuse is matched up with them that you're going to be like that. You know, I mean, it's there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's 15, 20 teams that, you know, can make a run and, uh, you know, Syracuse is a team who could make a run to the Final Four. They could, you know, they could lose in the first round if they're, you know, a five or six seed easily. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, a lot of good teams this year. I don't think there's a, any really, really great dominant teams. So I, I guess if there's a year to have a, you know, a, a mediocre, streaky team, you know, you hope, you know, you, you talked about UConn a couple of years ago. I, you know, this team kind of has that kind of talent. They just need to, to get it all going here. Yeah, I don't think if I was a higher seed, I'd want to play Syracuse. Like that that second round game, you know, hopefully we can get past the first, but that second round, because they can beat anybody, but I just yeah. think it's going to be hard for them to win. Six. Four, yeah. you know, the six you got to win, but even the four games in a row, you know, they, they can beat anybody, but, you know, maybe they could probably even drop that first round game if they're off. Yeah, a lot of people are calling for that. They say Syracuse has uh, three more games left. Georgetown, Big East tournament, first round, and NCAA tournament. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Um, even with our struggles, they've been against tough teams. Yeah, it's not like they, I mean, yeah. they don't have really a, a any awful losses. No, they haven't they. lost to a bad team. Temple's yeah. their worst loss on a neutral court. That's the other thing, you know, you hear Coach Beheim talk about a little bit. It's, you know, all the games outside of uh, Georgetown at home, I thought, you know, they could have won the Marquette, Marquette game. They could have won Louisville. These are games they're winning down the stretch and kind of turn over here, turn over there, and things didn't go their way. But it's not like they're getting blown out. Their defense is very good, which in the NCAA tournament, that's just as important, mm -hmm. if not the most important thing going. Um, so, you know, and these the Big East schools see their zone year in, year out. They kind of know how to attack it. And uh, in the tournament, you hope you get some of these teams who haven't seen a zone like Syracuse's and uh, – you know, I, I guess the one positive thing of this, you know, out of this losing streak is their defense has been really good. They, you know, the, they held Georgetown to 55 points, they only, but they scored 45. You know, it's uh, they, uh, they they get, they just got to score the ball. Yeah, I mean, really, we're having a podcast here. We can discuss it all night. If they make shots, they're going to win. If they miss shots, they're, they're it's a simple they, they, game. They might that? win one game, but they might they're not going to win the next if they don't get better shooting. Yeah, pretty simple game. Um, but I do got some great orange trivia for you guys, and we're going to preview that Georgetown game. Take a quick look around the Big East, and uh, first we're going to take a listen from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Attention, Finger Lakes residents: Have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Made Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Case deserves personal attention. At Made Maris and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315 568 0911. 
That's 315-568-0911. Madey, Maris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. The Newark Pilots. See tomorrow's Major League Stars today. For more information, go to newarkpilots.com. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generations Bank, we've greeted you by name, planned with you for the future, and stood by you when you needed a hand. It's what we do, and what we'll continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch, or go to mygenbank.com. Michigan State's killing Wisconsin. Yeah, Michigan State's killing Wisconsin. They are 40 to 20. Big Ten's crazy. It is. Um, the Indiana, Indiana, who was it? This Ohio State, Indiana game. I mean, Indiana doesn't look, look terrible. I always like in my feelings as a Syracuse fan because I obviously watch every game closely, sometimes twice, <laughs> every press conference. <laughs> and uh, then, but I watch other games whenever they're on. But you kind of don't really have a vested interest, so you kind of watch it with a different uh, frame of mind. If I'm an Indiana fan, I'm like devastated after losing to Ohio State like that. You're supposed to be the number one team in the country. They're they're had just about separated themselves as the favorite, and then they lose to uh, they lost two games. Yeah, and they they that was a game where they could have clinched their first outright Big Ten title in twenty five years night. or something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's we a, we it's get a big they, loss. Didn't they celebrate after? Then somebody yeah, else losing Bobby them? Knight. Oh, did they? It's a Bobby Knight tradition. He would have senior night after because he didn't want anybody thinking about anything else before the game. You know all the niceties. Uh-huh. He saved it for after. But then they lose, you know, at home, and then you got to celebrate the seniors. That's a tough one. Hmm. But maybe they should schedule. Uh, Northwestern next time for senior night. But uh, normally, Brad Connor's here, and he has great Syracuse trivia questions for us. But in his stead tonight, uh, I had to come up with something. And I was originally looking at some Georgetown trivia. And as I was doing, I said, geez, Georgetown's had some great centers over the years. Obviously, maybe I could take that type of angle. And then I said, well, what about Syracuse centers? And I'm wondering if you guys or our listeners at home, can name the succession of starting centers at Syracuse University from the first year Bayheim coached until now. I'll give you the first one. It was Roosevelt Bowie, and he was a, he was the starting center. And the way I chose this was they had the most starts. You understand? So, like, okay. there was a couple of years where some people split. And I'll even give you credit for a couple of years where it was almost an even split. But uh, Roosevelt Bowie, 1977 and 78, started as a as a uh, sophomore, junior, and senior for Syracuse. So that takes us right up to the 80-81 season, which I think is pretty easy. Andre Hawkins. No, nice, <laughs> not nice. But there was another famous Syracuse center before Andre Hawkins, who had a nice career in the NBA. Danny Shays. Yep, Danny Shays. I thought he was earlier, but he only. Well, that was his senior year. He played oh. three years with Bowie. And so he was okay when Roosevelt graduated. Uh, Danny Shays got to start that one year, hmm. um, 1980 81, the season the dome opened. So Danny Shays was starting center the first season at the Carrier Dome, and uh, then in 81 82, Verk Andre Hawkins, Andre Hawkins as a freshman started. Now that was the only year Andre Hawkins started as well. Wait a second, let me make sure I got this right. No, I'm wrong, 81 82. 83, 84, he started. Then 84, 85, a freshman came in, and uh, Hawkins moved over to power forward to make room for this guy. Cycli, that early? Yeah, Ronnie Cycli, yeah. 84, 85, fr- started as a freshman. Um, and then, of course, how many? So we had four years of Cycli at center. Yeah, 84, 85, 85, 86, 86, 87, 87, 88. Ronnie Cycli, which takes us up to 80. 889. Now that's a tough one, but I got to tell a story. Ryan Cycli's freshman year, um, Syracuse playing Seton Hall, and uh, Cycli's on a fast break, and he's all alone. And so, and I don't know how well you guys remember Ryan Cycli, but he was kind of like like the spotlight type mm-hmm. of deal. So he goes up for a reverse dunk on the breakaway and misses everything. 
<laughs> like, Mr. Rim? Mr. the Rim. Mr. <laughs> everything. And this is like probably the most embarrassing moment ever. Luckily, the internet didn't exist back then. Say, huh? You probably could find it somewhere if you searched hard enough. <laughs> they didn't even have a spot. Sports Center, uh, worst top 10 right <laughs> back then. So he got off scot free. I'm probably, me and everybody in the dome that day, only ones that remember it because it wasn't even televised that game, I remember, in 84, 85. So 88, 89. Uh, they had a starting the starting center according to the stat sheets. Um, he was it was his junior year. Derek Coleman. Yeah, good call, Vert. Good call. Um, Coleman started as a junior. Now in eighty nine ninety, Coleman obviously senior year. He stayed four years before he was top pick in the NBA draft. Um, but eighty nine ninety, who started at center for Syracuse? This was Coleman's senior year. Coleman's senior year. Hmm. Not Laurent Ellis. Is that your answer? That's my answer. Yeah, Laurent Ellis transferred from for Kentucky. I'm uh, on fire. You, you are, are on fire. Now it gets. This is where it gets a little tricky, but I still think you can keep this run going. Um, in the '90s, uh, so you had '89, '90, and then '90, '91 was Laurent Ellis. So Laurent Ellis' senior year was actually my freshman year at Syracuse. Okay. I didn't get the starting out at center. <laughs> so <laughs> I actually got another little story about it. Freshman year at Syracuse, basketball tryouts, walk-on tryouts, you know. And uh, a lot of people are saying, I should go. It would be just awesome to go try out, you know. And I thought about it too. And then I thought, you know, you know, no. I, mean, I'm not, <laughs> I, you know, I got zero chance of making this thing. And there was one kid on our floor who was a really good basketball player. He was on our inter intramural team, and he said he was going to go – and uh, he said that he, you know, had zero chance. <laughs> so we make fun of the walk-ons, you know, the when, you know, they come on, it's a big joke who can score. Oh, they're good. Yeah. They're they're good. One, one's playing overseas right now, yeah. I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Brandon Reese. Yeah. Is it Reese over in Israel, I think he's playing? I good believe so. Yeah. But, you know, they, it, this kid on my dorm, Sadler One, for all you uh, Syracuse alumni out there, um, was a fantastic basketball sure. player. I know even at, at William Mary, where I, I obviously played, the, the walk-ons would have been good Division three players, I think. Uh, you know, they're, they're kids who kind of, you know, got some looks and this and that and just wanted to go to school there for one reason or another and uh, were somewhat recruited, but, you know, they're walk-ons. They tried out and stuff like that, and they're very good players. So, yeah, And I suppose you have to be when you're going up against some of the best talent in the country at Syracuse and practice every day. Yeah. So, um, anyways, that's that. But so now we're at 91, 92, my sophomore year at Syracuse, and this individual's junior year, who was the starting center? 91, 92. Hunt Dog has a guess over there? No? <laughs> 91, 92. That was my junior year in high school. Yep. Starting center was... Uh, He's a well-known guy. Well-known name. I mean, you'll, you'll record, obviously... Reef Snyder. No, no, he came. Uh, yeah, I was, I was thinking about guessing him. It's it's a good guess. I'm trying to think who was on the teams. It's before Otis answer. Hill didn't Otis get Hill's there later. to the next year. He was he he was only a junior in high school then too. God, so before is he white or black? He is a black player, and he was. Uh, Bill Rafford used to get excited about the, some things that this guy did during the oh, game. Oh, uh, no. I could give you some other clues that would give it right away if you want. I'm drawing a blank. I, I, from New York City? Uh, geez, I can't remember where he's from. But he was big. Conrad McCray? Yep, yeah, good call. That's There's a good Conrad call. Conrad McCray. I was going to ask if he was there. better alive, but I didn't yeah, think That would have given it away. He went to play <laughs> Turkey. He, yeah, unfortunately, Conrad's not with us anymore. But yeah. uh, He is from the city. Now, I went to a Syracuse game that Bill Rafferty was doing, and I made a sign. He could dunk. He was good dunk. Oh, yeah. And the sign said, oh, it said, Bill Rafferty Fan Club, send it in Conrad. And it was obviously an ESPN game. After the game, I went. I waited and went. I kept my eye on Rafferty, and when he started making his way towards the dome concourse, I ran down with my sign. Told, "Hey, Bill Rafferty, I think you're the best, Mr. Rafferty." He was with Sean McDonough too, who actually went to Syracuse, but I didn't even acknowledge him. <laughs> 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 it was like, uh, I was like, 
you know, Mr. Raffi, you're the best. You know, you're so much better than Vital. Loveless, did you, can you sign this for me? He said, sure, come on with me. So I walk through the concourse. They have a limo waiting for him outside. And when he gets to the limo, he takes out a pen, puts the thing on the back of the limo, and, and signs it. And uh, He's my favorite today. So yeah, I, I still love, this, love the guy. Best. Love. No doubt. I love him and Bills together. Mm-hmm. My favorite. So there's another side note, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of side notes tonight, Jim. Yeah, well, when you, we talk about the Syracuse history, it brings back a lot of memories in this trivia segment. Conrad McRae is a junior and senior star, 91, 92, 93, 94. Or wait, yeah, 91, 92, 92, 93. 93, 94, a freshman came in and, and took over at center, and he would start three of the next four years. Otis Hill? Hill. Yeah, right. Hill, you yeah, got okay. it. You guys named him already earlier. So his freshman year, he started... Now, 94, 95, his sophomore year, for whatever reason, he didn't, he wasn't the primary starter at center. This was another guy that you've named. J.B. Reefsnyder. J.B. Reefsnyder. The Reefsnyder era. <laughs> yep. And uh, I've told the story. Any side notes on him, Jim? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> when I was, two, the two guys on the basketball team that I actually hung out with a little bit were Glenn Secunda. Yep. Remember Glenn Secunda? He Remember transferred to Penn State. He made a game winner against Seton Hall in 92. Um and J.B. Reesnyder, and it was through Secunda. Reesnyder was friends with Secunda. Reis, Reis, so anyways, I won't go into this whole big <laughs> J.B. Reesnyder bashing session, but I will say that we had a party one night on South Campus, and my roommate was on the wrestling team, and so there were some wrestlers there, Glenn Secunda, J.B. Reesnyder. Now, J.B. Reesnyder and Glenn Secunda weren't very big drinkers, I could tell, because they were drinking, and they were acting kind of foolish. <laughs> so... Um, which is probably a good thing. So anyways, throughout the course of this party uh, at uh, 108 Lambeth Lane in <laughs> South Campus, G- Reese Snyder and Secunda get challenged to a basketball game by two wrestlers who combined height was probably 8'3". <laughs> and they go, so we go out into the street where they had like a, there's a hoop South Campus sitting there kind of on the street, parking lot type of deal, turn on some car lights. And these guys play basketball, and the wrestlers killed them. <laughs> Reeves Snyder and kind of kept trying to do like a put on a show or something, and the, you know, they, and the and the wrestlers played serious basketball, and of course they were a little intoxicated, um, but the wrestlers beat them. And I thought to myself, this guy is a starting center <laughs> on a basketball team. He just got schooled by a couple of wrestlers. That's not good. So. Um, Reese Snyder only started one year as the primary started in uh, 95, 96. Otis Hill came back. 96, 97, Otis Hill, senior year also. But uh, Elver, Elvir Olshina also oh. started six games that year. Otis Hill must have been yeah. hurt. So, uh, <laughs> you know, think about a guy like Reef Snyder or old Elvir <laughs> Olshina starting on a Syracuse team nowadays. It's just, uh, I don't know if the talent was less there or. Or if Bayheim's system was a little different. But in 97, 98, thankfully, uh, this gentleman was a sophomore and he would start for the next three years for Syracuse. This this one you guys should get. Went on to play, in, went on to play in the NBA. The, uh, oh, uh, uh, what's his name? He's got the long hair. Yep. He was uh, a, he's into poetry. Yeah, he played for the Wizards. Yep, you got all that is right. I was going to use his name. Watkins? Daryl Watkins? No, 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 no that's a different guy. It's different. <laughs> What's his name though? Ethan Thomas. E- that's right. Yeah. And there's pro- producer Jeremy Hunt. You said wa- you said Watkins earlier. And you're yeah. Referencing him for <laughs> something different. Yeah, he's he's an answer coming up a little bit later here. Two thousand. So, Ethan Thomas starts for three years. One of the top probably. Five or six centers in history. He had a pretty good history. NBA career. He did. Yeah, Long I mean, one. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Longevity. If you can stick around for 12 years like he, I think he did, um, you're doing something right. You're also probably buying a pretty nice house. <laughs> um, 2000, 2001, that takes us to. And this individual started 21 games as a freshman, and there was another individual who started 13 games as a junior the 2000, 2001 season. This has got to be uh, tough. Craig Forth and uh, – Nope. No, nope. Craig Forth was not on campus at that point. He would be a freshman the following year. This is probably the toughest one. Who was with, that was McNeil was with Forth, right? Is that the one, McNeil? Jeremy McNeil, freshman yeah. year. 
he started 21 games, which is kind of hard to believe because he never started again. He was the best when they used to press. And he'd be back there. He was the I best know. Best I shot blocker. Press. And I kind of wanted to see Syracuse do that more with Fab Mello last year because I thought that McNeil press that year, the years that McNeil yeah. played back was unbelievable because you could be extra aggressive because they were going to try to challenge McNeil, and he had a knack of blocking the shot without making the and foul. It didn't really matter if he fouled either because yeah. you know, fourth, he was going to play. Yeah, most of the time they had fourth. and uh, Yeah, McNeil would play ten minutes and four fouls usually too. But he was a great dunker and shot blocker, and that was it. And nobody would make – nobody would pull up against that press either. Just pull up at the foul line, you know, <laughs> make a foul shot. But they would try to bring it in. McNeil would block it. And that would usually spark something the other way. Yep. But um, another note on McNeil. In 2000, the ch- national championship year, Syracuse played Pittsburgh in the Dome, and with no time left in regulation, Jerry McNeil heads to the free throw line, I down do to that. 47%, 43%, <laughs> one of the worst, you know, terrible free throw shooter, knocks them both down, sends it in overtime, Syracuse wins. So uh, that's my fondest Jeremy McNeil memory. But that brings us up ahead now to 2001-2002, where McNeil was still on the team. But he didn't start anymore because a freshman named Craig Forth came on and started the next four years, which uh, and and got a national championship ring. Yeah, steady, great career. I mean, would you trade Craig Forth for Raheem Christmas this year? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's kind of scary, <laughs> but maybe. I think so. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Um, so that hey, brings he, he started on the national championship team. You know, I mean, he. Fourth was unappreciated. Everyone always bashed him. I thought, a little, and not everybody, but, but the thing he is, he's a role player. Yeah, yeah, he rebounded. He blocked out. He's probably in the right position and more defense, than Christmas yeah. is. You know, it's not like I Christmas think they scores. Always, at they all, always say they? that he was one of the. He was the best anchor. Of the, well, defense, the best, uh, defense of his own, just because he knew where he was supposed to be. Well, Bam like something because he started him <laughs> all four years. You know, um, 2005, 2006, 2006, 2007 seasons. This man started. This is gonna be Daryl Watkins. Yeah, this is Mookie Watkins. Um, Daryl Mookie Watkins. You probably remember this. Was it Billy Selick? Did he put? So he was the guy that started the extra games. McNeil's freshman year, he started 13 games, and that was another time. I'm, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> I this just guy- remember going to a game and like I was I was young and people were heckling him and he like turned around and yeah, I poor felt guy. bad for the guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what he, he you know, what's he going to do? I'm not going to play. Yeah, you know and. Selick will never go down. Well, won't have his jersey lifted to the rafters <laughs> of the dome. I'm sure, but you know he is a, a part of the fabric. As is Dave Syak, another great Syracuse center who uh, never started for Syracuse. But uh, um, so that brings us up to 2007-2008, and this gentleman started as a sophomore, junior, and senior. And again, you guys should be able to run the table here and out. So we're talking after Watkins. After Watkins. Uh. Right now, I'm sure that our listeners are screaming <laughs> at you this this guy's name because um, you guys both know it. I'm not even gonna because it's Rinzi Onowaku. Oh, okay. Yeah, obviously. Now he took me a while. Maybe uh, who's who who's better? Who had a better Syracuse career, Rinzi Onowaku or Otis Hill? Onowaku, probably, honestly. Yeah. I I bet you I would say that, too. But you wouldn't have thought it probably when Onowaku just started t- out. It was just tough that way it ended. You know? Yeah. And he was a one of the leading he field was one goal of the, shooters. You know, one of the few centers who we actually would throw the ball to and they could, he could score. You yeah. You know what I mean? Out of all the guys we named, most of them were defensive players and rebounders. You know, Onowaku, we actually had a post presence for once. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It was – and then that Georgetown game, he gets hurt, and that. they lose the Butler. Yeah, yeah. So 2010, 2011, and 2011, 2012. This guy started, although he kind of this guy kind of screwed Rick Jackson out of the spot because his freshman year he would come in and immediately come out, but he has the most starts by far. Again, cut, say it, honey. You know yeah. it. You know it. Say yeah, it. Say it, Jer. Fab Mello. That's right. Yeah. Fab Mello. And then uh, that brings us up to this year where Rakeem Christmas. Right? Fab, Fab so, started all the games as a freshman, right? Yeah, yeah they pull him after you do the Then they yeah, Rick Jackson thing. would play the – The first thing Fab Mello did wrong if uh, or didn't, he would come out. Funny, you, don't think in your head that, you don't even think in your head that he was the starter. You know? Yeah, because he, he played who a would minute go, and a half Who came in for him? 
Um, Rick Jackson. No, no, no. Jackson would slide over from the power forward. Yeah, who did come in for him on those teams? Um, was that when like Chris Joseph was six man? Yeah. Year? Yeah, but he wasn't play center, right? No, but yeah, they slide Jackson slide over, over, and ja- and Joseph was six man. Jackson was a great. He was phenomenal. His senior year, he was phenomenal. Yeah. His rebounding own, and scoring. Yeah, he was a beast. He carried him, um, but he could never go to his right. Only the left, and really, if you play overplayed the left, he was tricky though. You know, he he, he had some nice moves. He worked there. with it. He worked with it, and he and everything left that he got off was in. He was and he was a great rebounder and a great defender, but uh, he could never go to his right. So, um, and then Rick Cream Christmas. So there you have it. Uh, all the centers <laughs> starting centers in Syracuse history. Hopefully, Brad Connor enjoys it when he gets a chance to listen. <laughs> um, so Georgetown. On Saturday, last time we played, it was the Otto Porter show. What do you do different to contain a guy like Porter this time around? Switch to man? No. no. Uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, uh, you know, George, that was the game, you know, obviously Porter won that game pretty much single-handedly. Georgetown's next highest score had seven points. <laughs> you find them, and, you know, typically Syracuse has done a good job of that. When somebody gets hot, they usually adjust the zone and, you know, shut them down. Um but it'd be you know Syracuse has a lot, you know, a payback I think for over the years. The I way, hope so. The way Georgetown, you know, when John Thompson Senior kind of closed down Manly Fieldhouse, and then yeah. uh, this last game, you know, Junior kind of closed out the uh, Georgetown rivalry at Syracuse here. So you know we ha- we have some payback. It'd be nice, nice game to get Georgetown. Uh, it's a big game for seeding wise too, isn't yeah. it, the attorney? The, yeah, absolutely. Syracuse has a shot at the double buy still. They need to win that game. They need though. they need some help, which isn't um, always a good thing in no, the history of no. the Big East tournament. It's true. Um, UConn two years ago won five games in five days or whatever it was, right? Wasn't it yeah, five man. and five? Um, All those people that have tickets for Thursday to go watch Syracuse, so I'm sure. Hope they have the double bye. Last year I went down for the semis and the finals, and they lost in the semis, and it was a def- so deflating, you know. Yeah. Because instead of – First going of all, down? No, not no. this year. Well, maybe not, I don't not know. Not ever then. Not if it's not yeah. this year. It's not <laughs> no, ever. I mean, you know, maybe if they get to the finals, sometimes you can go down and get it an easier one. Always, you yeah. always kind of finals is always the easiest. I yeah. went the year uh, uh, my buddy was working at Rutgers, um, Lanny Owen, and he kind of got us in, and we went. And the, the year they lost to Louisville in the finals, I went down. We were just going to go to this <laughs> crazy story. I had tickets for the UConn game, the six overtime game oh. that I sold. <laughs> on eBay, and then we were gonna go to the semis because we had to work and everything, and then uh, we went down and watched the semis, and they won. And my wife had to come back for a baby shower, so I drove to Binghamton and uh, I met, right I met Curdy Bastion, and we went back down and watched the uh, the Louisville game. Nice. Actually, sat right behind uh, McNamara was like two two feet to my right, and uh, Routen's dad was right by us, and Leo. it was pretty cool. Yeah, there's the We were like five rows up on the baseline. It was almost It's the best it. place oh, to yeah. watch a basketball awesome. game. Awesome. Never been there. Never been to a game. It's uh all my life. It's it's uh it's hard to describe. It's not an intense atmosphere. It's very comfortable in in big time. It's just very comfortable in big time. I don't know what it is about it, but uh not a bad seat in the whole place. And uh now that you know, we're, this is the last time we're going to play in that tournament, and that's the hardest thing, I think, for me to take leaving the Big East is that we're not going to have that to look forward to in the beginning of every March, going down to New York City and playing in the Big East tournament. And I think it's good. The recruits are – I think it's going to hurt recruiting because I think every team in the Big East can say to a recruit, hey, you come play for our school and play in this league, we're going down to Madison Square Garden every March playing in the best tournament on earth, the best conference tournament on earth. And, you know, especially for Syracuse where they own – New York City, for the most part, when they go down playing the Big East tournament, it's even more of a recruiting draw. Now, you, you can't say that. You're going to say, well, you know. Well, AC- especially now with that new conference forming, that they're they're pretty much solidified yeah. that they're going to be there. Be a great event too. That's yeah. a great great event. Uh, the the they're keeping the name too, the Big East, yep. and they're going to bring in a couple other schools, and and I think it's going to be a great conference. I'm glad they get the name because that preserves some of our basketball history. I think the other I, conference is gonna be like the American Twelve or something. The like American that. Twelve, which is not a bad name, it sounds a little, you know, it's fitting, I guess, because it's yeah the uh, the vast 
land area that the conference is going to cover. And again, they it can build something out of that as crazy as it seems, but uh, you know, with that mismatch of uh, geographical locations. But how how do you like to be UConn? Not they. It's not like they stayed in the Big East. They still get to go to Madison Square Garden. They don't even get that. It's like they they left the Big East, but don't even get any spoils at all. Uh, yeah, they got shafted. They're going to be going to Houston Same and with Cincinnati. SMU. Same with Cincinnati. I agree. I agree. It's uh, it's as much as I dislike UConn. You know, it, I feel a little bad for him, just a <laughs> little bit. But, um, yeah. And so you know, we've been talking about that obviously all year. And uh, it's really going to start to hit home when Syracuse plays Georgetown for the last time. And then we head to the Big East tournament. And when they lose that final Big East game, or if they do, hopefully we win it and go out like that. But if they should happen to lose that last game, I mean, that's finality for you right there. It's over. Yeah. It's over. Get ready for Greensboro. (laughs) Yeah. It's a bummer. It is. So not to end on a sour note tonight, but uh, it is kind of getting late. Uh, Big, big week ahead our plans work for the upstate orange podcast are we're coming back sunday night at nine we're going to recap the georgetown game we're going to preview the big east tournament so just a four-day layoff then we come we're going to be on sundays from here on out till syracuse loses or wins the national championship if syracuse wins the national championship we're going to do 10 more shows (laughs) (laughs) but uh Sunday night's better, obviously, because uh, one of our most popular shows of the year is Selection Sunday at 9 o'clock. Zach, you're welcome to come back. It's a great time. We might have six, eight guys up here. Um, but 9 o'clock on Selection Sunday, we come back, break down all the brackets, do a little recap of the Big East Tournament. But mostly it's going to be about the brackets. Yeah. I'm feeling good about, you know, last I've been to the Final Four the last three years thinking, you know, Syracuse is going to be there. This year I, I decided not to go and uh, – Will be the year they go. So it's all lining go. up. We're <laughs> shooting like crap. You're not going. Everything's <laughs> lining up for a deep run. That's right. And, uh, and I predict the Syracuse win Saturday. I do too. What? What? Uh, I knew you did, but <laughs> I'm going with what's the line on that? Around Good question. Yeah, I've been they, so wrapped up in high not, school. They probably have it out. They don't have it out yet. Probably, but uh, I'm assuming. Oh, I bet they do. In Vegas, I'm sure they do. Five, maybe four. It's Georgetown five. I'd say something. Yeah, like I would say. I wouldn't be surprised if it was even seven or Georgetown's eight. a team, you know. They lost to Villanova. Yeah, Otherwise, they would have won. You know, they won, what, 10 Big East games in a row? 11 out of 12. The rest 12. But the team, you look at them, you know, you kind of wonder how they do it, really. You know, obviously, Otto Porter's great. That's, that's but, how they uh, do it. saying Thompson's a legit candidate for coach of the year. Oh, I would think I so. because they mean, added one of their best players. Was, yeah, well, well, what's his name? Wellington. Who, who got suspended for Georgetown? He's the, he was their second leading scorer and second leading rebounder, and uh, you know without him they've been doing phenomenal, obviously. And uh, you know Georgetown coming in this year, they lost their top three scorers from last year's team, I believe. And uh, you know obviously Otto Porter's a not only a Big East Player of the Year, probably favorite uh, national player of the year. I'd say so. The way Odell Depot's been playing for Indiana, a little not so great in those losses, but uh, I think Georgetown's team that hasn't gotten much credit this year. Um, you win 11, 10, 11 games in a row in the Big East, and and you're, you know, ranked fourth or fifth or wherever they've been having them lately. Uh, yeah, Thompson's pretty much done everything. He just can't really get over the hump in that tournament. You know, they, yeah, they he hasn't had, made a run. He hasn't had a real but good they, record in the NCAA. They went to. Yeah. A, he's got one Final Four, right? I Junior? No, I, thought, I don't think so. I don't believe so. One year uh, they think they were supposed to, and I thought they lost early. I don't know. Grade eight. All right. So. Anyways, it's the last time I predict in victory just because that's the way it's got to be. I can't, I can't, we can't go out losing twice to Syracuse or, or Georgetown in our final Big East season. Um, in an interesting twist, however, I'm in a pool where we draft college basketball teams at the beginning of the year, and it's just for the regular season. You get one point for every win. Well, I'm in first place by a point, by a win. I got like 137 or something. I got Memphis, I got Gonzaga. Um, Delaware, you know, teams like that have value in this mm-hmm. poll. I also have Georgetown, and the guy behind me has Syracuse. Um, so I don't like having any rooting interest in Georgetown, <laughs> so I'm hoping I can get one game clear before Saturday. So um, we'll see. But uh, I would forego winning that pool and the cash rewards that go along with it for a Syracuse win. So, again, Zach, thanks for coming in and, and sitting in. And uh, Verk. Enjoy your weekend, and uh, 
we'll see you at the end of it on Sunday night right back here. Um, and thanks to all our listeners for joining us again on the Upstate Orange Podcast. Uh, please remember to subscribe to our feed on iTunes, Stitcher.com, YouTube, or via RSS. You can find us on Facebook by searching Upstate Hoops and on Twitter at HoopsPod. For my co-host Brad Connor, for Lions head coach Zach Young, my partner Matt Berkey, our producer Jeremy Hunt, I'm Jim Sunakropi. See you back here Sunday night at 9 o'clock.